Okay, so we're gonna jump into modeling our poker chip and our playing card. So one of the things I did was I took some reference imagery of the chip and the card that I wanted to um, model. So I can get size and relativity and all that kind of figured out as far as what the poker chip is compared to the card. Um, and I could model them accurately. So I just laid them out in a couple different photos. Um, got some examples for the ridge and for texturing purposes and stuff for later. So um, I know right away the height and width of the card and of the poker chip. So I'm going to jump into Cinema. One of the first things you can do is go to Preferences and change your units. Since I measured the stuff in inches, I can get it exactly. I mean, it was made by a machine, so we can, um, we're can. we not dealing with anything organic, so we can get it as exact as we want. So I'm going to do my unit display to be inches. So Poker Chip is pretty simple, right? It's a cylinder. Um, it's just a short kind of squashed down cylinder. So I'm going to make a new cylinder. I'm zoomed in there, sorry. Um, and I'm going to type in those those units. So I had one and a half inches by an eighth of an inch thick. Um, I measured the thickness here. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. Um, and that's 0 0.125. Bam. So now I got this little poker chip. And I, I just tapped the S key to kind of pop in there. But it's a little small. Um, so what I'm going to do is... I'm actually, now that I relatively have the size, um, I don't want it to be teeny tiny in my in my world. Um, I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. You could um, adjust your scale of your world and everything and work around it. But I like to just stick with the default and just make my pieces fit what I'm working with. So that wouldn't matter when it comes to dynamics and stuff. But we're not going to do a whole lot with that today. So got my chip. That's the size of the cylinder we need. So there's a couple things I want to do to get it ready um, to refine the modeling of it. Uh, before I make it editable. So I have this primitive cylinder. Um, I want to work with a few more segments. So I'm going to do 60 because um, that is easily um, divisible by 6 and will work well with um, a 360 degree circle. I'm also, if you look at this poker chip and you get in here with it, um, the edge is not perfectly flat. Like there's a little bit of a kind of a bevel and some roughness to it. So that'll just make it feel a little bit more believable. So I'm going to add a small um, fillet. I know some people call it a fillet. I call it a fillet because I like steak. Apologies, but that's what I do. So, you about three segments and maybe like try point one here and see how that feels. It might be a little small at point five. It feels a lot better. Maybe point four feels pretty good. Okay. So we've got that edge. And the one more other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it um, some height segments. I need to give it three height segments, and you'll see why later. Mostly that's going to help me with texturing when I get into texturing these little. Um, lines um, on the side of the chip, um, but they'll also help with um, pushing in my my groove, and you'll see that in a minute as well. So that's my primitive shape; it's ready to go. So what I like to do is I like to hold the control key and duplicate it. So I have my primitive still if I need to edit it, and now I have this other cylinder, and I'm going to tap the C key, and that's going to make it editable. So we need to lay in those um, those grooves that are in that chip. So what I'm going to do is, um, I have a texture of one of those chips that I scanned in that I'm just going to use to reference. We'll get into texturing later. But I essentially just clicked on a material, clicked on load image, and went and found that texture of that chip. I'm going to drop that on my poker chip. And I'm going to make it cubic. And then I'm just going to play with my, um, my length and height here until I get it kind of where I want it. It's still a little small. Small yet. Getting closer. 400, that might be a little much, but maybe right on the money. Getting closer. A lot of times this is just trial and error to get the texture line up the way you want to. And I'm using the cubic method, so it's not super exact. I'm just kind of using it for reference. So, okay, that'll be good enough for my reference. I feel pretty about that. So <clears throat> I'm gonna use what's called the knife tool. So if I hit the K button, um, that'll be the knife tool. And I'm gonna change this to lines. And now I get this, typically it's in line selection. And so you can do cuts and stuff through your geometry. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do loop selection. So I'm just gonna come in here and lay in where that that groove needs to be. There's one. And then I'll do another one. Feels pretty good. Um, and then I need to duplicate that on the bottom as well. 
So I got my, my textures good to go now, just help me set it up. Um, so what I can do is, <clears throat> um, I, this usually is in a, um, like a left view or a front view or something like that. I just go ahead and change it to bottom. And then I can also make those exact same cuts using the ones from the top as my guide. So it's showing through, it's looking kind of through it right now and showing the top as well. But I can just go ahead and line this up the exact spots and click it again. And then if I zoom around to the bottom, you see my cuts are there and ready to go. So then what I'm going to do is use the actual uh, loop selection tool again. But this time I'm going to use it for um, the faces in polygon mode. And you just get it lined up, select that face, and then I'll go back over here. <clears throat> and this is the right side of it. So I'm going to use what's called my extrude tool. And I'm just going to extrude it down. And I'm going to extrude it right to the middle. I'm going to use that, um, that, that middle line that I created um, as my guide. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the bottom. So we'll do loop selection again. And I'm just tapping U and then L to do that. Uh, close. There we go. And then same thing, I'll go down here, and I'll bring that into the bottom. So now, on the top, bottom and the top, I have that groove, um, and our poker chip is set up, and it is ready to rock. So that's modeling the poker chip. And then we'll do the card quickly here. Um, the card, again, I have the dimensions for it. So the card is, uh, looks like, two and a half inches by three and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna use a, um, a vector uh, line in the shape of a rectangle and I'm gonna do it in the XZ axis and we'll type in exactly what I said which is two and a half by three and a half. And I'll do exactly what I did before and I'll just scale this up. Oops, there we go. And if I look at it in relation to the to the poker chip, um, it's a little more than two poker chips long, so I can just go on top here, kind of get this so it feels pretty good. And that's what's not gonna be exact. I could model them both at the same size and then scale them up, but uh, they don't need to be exact uh, for my purposes. So I feel pretty good about that. Um, and then they have this great rounding feature here so I'm just going to bring this roundness up and kind of match what I think the card. I mean, they're kind of finer points. They're not super great radius. So I feel pretty good about that. Maybe a little bit more. And there's my card. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw it into an extrude nerve. Toss it in there. Um, and I'm going to extrude it on the y-axis. I'm going to do one here and see that feels. It needs to be thick enough that I can texture it and that it feels right. So oops. Bam. Looks like I still did it on the wrong axis. Boom, that feels great. So there you go, that's our poker chip and our playing card, and then we'll jump into texturing it next.